Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome to the February 17, 2022 meeting of the Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission. The Commission will review two continuances and three new applications this evening. We will also conduct additional business at the end of the meeting. We're conducting this meeting online in accordance to, with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The public may access these I calls can, through both that. telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask oh, questions, sir. provide public oh, comment really on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. Do so, please raise your hand in the participant function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you are calling in and cannot use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Our host will mute microphones of those not speaking to preserve bandwidth and may need to turn off video, except for the commissioners, the host, and the current applicant. I will call on each commissioner for comments on an application and then open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to continue to approve, to approve with conditions or to reject. I will ask for a second and conduct a roll call vote. Because I can't hear. Once the commission has acted on an application, the applicant is free to leave the meeting. We will now do a roll call of the members of the commission and I go around in my screen, it's Melissa. Can you hear me? Oh, Melissa? did you say Melinda? I'm oh, sorry, yes, here. Um, Dennis? Dennis Fiore? Here, unmute. Paul Ware? Present, yeah. Henry Moss? Present. Peter Novelli? Here. And I am uh, myself here. The voting members uh, for this uh, uh, meeting will be Dennis Fiore, Peter Novelli, Melinda Shamboy, uh, Paul Ware, and myself. At the end of the meeting, we will conduct some additional business and uh, we'll review some of the meetings. So we are going to go to our first applicant. Uh, which is a continued problem here, which is the O'Brien Design Group, 363 Main Street. We had a site visit this morning, which was very helpful, and uh, we express our gratitude for the, organizing that. And um, if you want to, to add anything to the design, I understand that there were some changes in the, uh, in the sizes of the structures and so forth. If you want to give us a, a quick summary about it, that would be very helpful. To mute yourself. Is it working with the space bar? Yep, there you go. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so I, I want to thank the um, commission for organizing this morning. Um, and for those of you who came out, we took, um, you know, a lot of the comments and, and suggestions to heart from last meeting, and we uh, brought to a, an additional option uh, for the for, for the front dormer on the house uh, that we presented to the folks that were there, uh, which would be reducing by thirty percent the size of the window from our prior uh, application. Where there was some concern by committee members that perhaps the window being repeated in its existing size felt a little bit heavy. Uh, we felt we could still accomplish what we wanted, uh, certainly functionally and, and, and to keep sort of the balance of the house um, with a reduction of 30% of that window. Um, and discussion was sort of limited to that uh, north facing Main Street elevation. Do we have any plans, uh, Heather, that reflect uh, those changes that are being proposed? And I understand that the, the top is the original one, and the bottom is the yeah. The, the top, the the top uh, on your plan shows what we presented last meeting. Uh, the full size uh, repeat of the windows below, the lower with these um, sort of 
visual, these are, these are scaled proportionally, but they're just for visual reference. Um, you know, the side walls on these dormers obviously will match the house. Um, we just block them in to, for ease of, you know, visibly seeing it off the roof of the house. Uh, but the lower uh, reflects the 30% reduction in size. Okay. And were there any changes on, on the ones on the back? I think that you were mentioning that you may do that, although it's not, we're not clear that it's a preview of the commission, but just as a matter of information. Yeah, we would, we would, it is right, even though we didn't bring it up this morning, we would create the, the dormers throughout, if the four, the main street elevation dormer is reduced by 30%, we would do the same with the backyard facing, just for uniformity consistency. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to alphabetically, uh, Dennis, uh, any comments, please? Um, what I was amazed at the site visit was the condition this house is in. The owners have done a phenomenal job of preserving this property. And you heard it here, but I even like the windows, which are all replacements. No. But I thought they looked great. I was, you heard it here. Wait, is and, this being uh, recorded? This, this, is, this is really a pristine site by site. Remember, this is not setting any kind of precedent. I know. Um, but I really, really like this house. Uh, having said that, I'm against this dormer in the front. Uh, I think the house is so pristine to put a dormer that was never there in the front, I don't think it's the right thing to do. You can make it as big as you want in the back. We talked about a skylight that already exists and enlarging that on the top of the, of the roof, create more, uh, more light. I think that in these terms, this is not a historic house, meaning Washington didn't sleep here. Uh, nothing happened of, of particular importance, but it is in the historic district. But if you took a house on Lexington Road, and we've been there before, one of those very early houses no, of no historic value, there are some that aren't, that, that Washington didn't sleep in. Um, if you take those houses and we were asked to put a dormer on one of those, what do you think we would say? I think we would be totally against it. So this is sort of prejudice to not change uh, uh, 18th century houses or 17th century houses, the core of these, we don't have that same sort of standard when we look at other houses. So, so I, you know, I just, I can't endorse putting a dormer on the, on the front, although I do endorse putting dormers on the back. Okay, <clears throat> fair comments. Um, uh, Henry Moss, comment? I thought that um, this move with the shed roof rather than a pediment to a smaller dormer on the front was uh, showed a lot of progress. And I'm less fearful that the value of that house as a contributor to the street frontage would be reduced seriously by allowing this dormer. <clears throat> Thank you, Henry. Uh, Peter. Thank you, Luis. Sorry, and I didn't mean to over talk there, Dennis. Um, I have to say I'm leaning with Henry. I, I agree in many respects, Dennis, with your assessment, uh, but I also, bec mostly because of the change from the pediment to the shed and the reduction in size, I just see this as a, it, it's an evolving home. It's not really materially harming the overall um, uh, gestalt, if you will, of the house. So I have no strong objections to it. And I apologize for missing the meeting this morning, but I drive by this house at least twice a day. So <laughs> I'm very hey, Thank you, Peter. Uh, Melinda. Well, I'm sort of in between here. I, I, I am pleased to see that they reduce the size of the dormer. It's definitely less objectionable. I I, you know, given my druthers, I'd say it'd be sort of nice not to have to do it, but I also think it's probably okay to do it. Um, so, like I said, I'm, I'm on the fence, but I, I don't think I'd block it. You think of Melinda Paul? Yeah, um, I think the proportion really, um, underscores that, that this is an appropriate modification to the house, despite the year of the house. My memory is I wasn't at the site meeting this morning, but I did go by in the past couple of weeks and or since our last meeting. 
but my memory is across the street there is in fact uh, a similar configuration that is a, a centralized dormer mm -hmm. on the front am, am i wrong about that is this i, if I, I, know can, if I could jump in i think i think this morning from from the front here you can see about three or four on immediate immediately adjacent homes yeah yeah the, well, that was my impression too that style and gable you know right so i i i'm in favor of this i think it's it's a very good modification i think the proportions are good i don't think it destroys any of the aesthetic or historic value of the house and i think the same for the the rear of the building i mean the fact that this has been reduced proportionately i think makes it absolutely acceptable to me. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, I will say that I understand uh, what uh, Dennis is uh, conveying in the sense of uh, keeping the historic reference, but I think that the historic reference is not lost by adding this dormer. In fact, I think that uh, aesthetically, the house looks uh, a little more attractive uh, with the presence of the storm, especially the now has the reduction size. So I, I would go in, in favor of the dormer, and I have no disagreement with the uh, dormers on the back. Um, any public comments on um, 625, sorry, <laughs> uh, 363 Main Street? If there are no public comments, then I will ask for a motion from the Commission. I will move that the work at 363 Main Street to construct roof dormers on the, uh, I'm not sure of the uh, orientation, so the front and back side of the house, uh, three roof dormers, two over two windows, uh, one on the front of the house, two on the rear of the house, is approved as with these modified submitted drawings, which I haven't seen Heather posted yet, but. I'm assuming we have them on record. The one caveat I would add in my motion is that we are uh, we are allowed to see construction drawings of the final size and shape and configuration. And I think uh, we've got all the paint colors and other things submitted already in the original package. Is that correct, Kevin? It's all remaining as existing. Okay. Yep, we're not changing any exterior finishes. So that's my only addition would be to submit drawings once they're certainly and, and and just to speak to that that was raised last time and I didn't get a chance to respond it's certainly something that we will be submit be providing obviously we'll need to for our building permit but we wanted to go through the acceptability portion first before having the structural drawings you know buying the structural drawings for the correct size sure thank you so that'll certainly be part of the public file on this Thank you for that. Second. There's my motion. I need a second. Second. Okay, either Melinda or Paul are second. Okay, so I'm gonna go uh, uh, in alphabetical order backwards. Uh, Paul. Aye. Hey, Melinda. Aye. Peter. Aye. Hey, Henry. Aye. Um, Dennis? Uh, no. Uh, I will be an aye. So I believe that the motion will pass with uh, four votes in favor and one against it. So I believe that you are all set. Thank you. We thank you all very much for your input and for your time. Welcome. Thanks. Okay, the next application, it's a 48 uh, a Monument uh, Square, the North Bridge Monument Square Historic District, and it's a Concord a Colonial Inn um, for a, a number of changes in the front of the building. Uh, I see Alec Adamson and uh, our architect. You wanna go ahead and uh, give us a quick tour. We had a set this, this morning as well. And um, we had the uh, opportunity to see exactly what are the physical changes involved. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all of you for participating this morning for your time and consideration, and also join us in a Zoom meeting this evening. Uh, we really appreciate for your time. And as we, um, actually, I'll let you continue. I'll just close the door for the moment. So yeah, sure. Sorry, but I didn't. Did you ask? Were you asking us a question or? Yeah, well, no, we, I, uh, you can go quickly through the through the project. Uh, if, uh, you can uh, tell us exactly what are you going to do. I know that we discussed it uh, the last time, and uh, we had some comments. And uh, if, if if you want to reiterate what uh, the plan and uh, whether you have modified any of the designs from the previous application that we have on file. Okay, so uh, this morning's meeting, I, I, if I'm, and if I'm hearing you right, you want me to sort of give a dialogue of what was said this morning at the meeting. So, well, the, actually, we want you, you, you want to reiterate the bird's eye view of all, what's the purpose, what you're doing, and what are the principles that you're following. Uh, very quickly, this is not a full presentation. You know, we already had a full presentation. But yeah, uh, basically, our goal in the uh, uh, project that we, sub we submitted is the extension of the uh, porch patio, uh, which is covering, which is going to cover um, just the left side of the building. And as we mentioned uh, in the prior meetings, uh, reviewing our picture, uh, pictures that we had from 1920s, that porch part was already there. Uh, it's not like something we are adding up or uh, we are putting the exact same structure that will match with uh, back in 1920s uh, columns and patio. Now, our goal is to extend the patio. And the reason why we would like to do that is as a all of you know that the inn has so much impact with the town's um, economy. And during the COVID challenging times, um, a lot of clientele, they requested to sit outside and we couldn't be able to provide them more seating because they didn't want to sit indoors and they didn't want to sit next to each other. So we are trying to provide them more seating areas. And respect to all our clientele, but most of our clientele are uh, I would say 50% senior citizens, and we want them feel welcome. We want them feel safe and secure. Now, when they come in, they request to sit outside. And as of right now, we have only 16 seats outside. As I mentioned this morning, um, by adding that porch or uh, covering that patio, it will basically give us up to 40 extra seating. And with that way, we can make sure that in the summertime, we have more areas covered. Now, as of in, we love our history and we want to make sure that we preserve our history for the future generations. And we wouldn't do anything extraordinary. We wouldn't hurt the building or we wouldn't hurt the history at the same time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned that you had some uh, uh, photographs. Uh, can we review those photographs and can you take us a tour uh, with the photographs so we get a context of uh, where the modifications are going to go? Do we have those photographs, uh, Heather? Do you remember that picture that you showed me? Um, I think. Yeah, Heather should have a picture of the, um, the covered. I'm not sure if I have a picture. Um, historic photos that will be. There's historic photos here. Yeah. And then these were the other photos submitted, but it looks yeah. like they're all of the patio. I, I think that the historic photos would, would be appropriate because you know, we can uh, compare what was there before, what it's being done, 
and uh, especially what, what is the interpretation that, that we're going to use. Uh, one of the questions that uh, uh, was discussed was whether having a structure similar to the one that is in the main building, in the adjacent building, uh, is or is not historic. So maybe you can mention, uh, especially, I, I cannot point or you know, in the large building on the left, we see a, a little a terrace. In the smaller building on the right, we don't see that terrace. That's the terrace that's being built right now. Is that correct? Yes, the, I, I believe there's some photographs there that we submitted uh, that the terrace, the brick terrace that has been built. The one that moves over. So you see this one? Yeah. The one on the right, far right. That's what I'm talking about. One on the far right. Yeah, I can't really see it, but it's okay. Is there any other information you want to share with us in terms yeah. of what are yeah. what's yeah. the yeah. rationale of the principles? So, yeah, that that picture to the to the right of you know, I'm looking at the right of the screen. I mean, all of those elevations, you know, were you know are very important to us that front picture that's directly on the screen, that, that entrance, uh, Port Cochere is, is just a beautiful uh, detail and we wanted to keep that. So we wanted to extend uh, and keep the same details that's at the existing inn, and you can see that in the older photographs. And also, uh, we submitted the photo on your right that has the old car, the, the 1930s car. And I, I, I brought that down to Charlie Audi for Charlie Mo Mobile, and he, he determined, because I was trying to determine the age of that photograph was taken and it showed a covered porch over the salon, a little smaller. So uh, Charlie determined that that car was 1930. So that was probably built in 1930 that had the covered porch over that area. There's, you know, there's been a whole variety of Different designs. There was a porch over the over that handicapped entrance. Uh, there've been many change, minor changes to the uh, to both facades, all the facades, and now it's sort of reduced to very simple. And what we're proposing to do is just to keep everything the same color, the same material, and same columns, as we explained this morning, and they're on the drawings, and just cover. Um, the decks that are there. They come out anywhere from nine to 10 feet and they do not, I think one of the interesting things that we really couldn't determine at the last meeting, but we did at this meeting is I was able to explain that the decks do not go wrap around a corner. They just come perpendicular straight out and they do not wrap around. They just protrude 10 feet from the face of the building on both the salon and and the uh, handicapped entrance. Okay, um, I'm gonna run my screen. Uh, Melinda, any comments? I'm you sorry. Muted. Sorry about that. I I think these plans are great. I think that uh, um, another covered area. Uh, will not disrupt the um, facade of the building in any way. In fact, when I was standing um, across the street and in front of one of the office buildings, I because the roof is so flat, I couldn't even see what the 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 uh, porch that comes off from the existing building. Now it's it's almost invisible, and I assume that that will be true. Um, with the the new um, design that you have, um, I absolutely. think absolutely. Um, if I can interrupt, uh, that was a key thing for our design. That pitch is like uh, one and a half feet per ten feet, and it's really almost dead flat. Yeah. And when you're walking across the street, as we did over over the years, and even as you're walking close to it, you really it, it almost disappears. It almost disappears. Exactly. And I think it, it'll be, well, first of all, there's never enough room to 
<laughs> for most of the people who want to be there, you got to be there really early in order to get a seat out there. It's very desirable. I think to have a little more space will be terrific. And um, I, I'm I'm all for it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, can, can you hear me? You cannot hear me. Oh gosh, we're in trouble. No, we can hear you. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you. you. Oh, I can hear you. <laughs> All right, uh, Dennis, better, uh, right. comments. Um, I need one more run through and what you're doing very quickly. Uh, I just heard you say that you have 16 spots now and you want to go to 40. And I didn't see room for 40 spots out here. So I, I just need to, I, I'm not understanding uh, where all those spots are coming from. Sure, I said up to 40 um, and I didn't say it's exactly 40. Uh, so basically we already have 16 seats covered. Now if we so have- So the if, 16 under the current colonnade, right? On the right. Correct, yes. correct. Right. And if we add left side of the building, that will add up up to 40 but that's not necessarily 40. Now, when I say up to 40, I wanna be realistic and I want to add the areas that will cover with the umbrella. There's an open space, there's still gonna be open space. And if we add those seats there, that will bring up to 40. On the brick patio, I think you're Correct. talking about. Correct, yep, yeah. that's right. Yep. So how many, seat, how many seats do you anticipate if we covered both sides of the left side? How many new seats would you be able to get out there? Well, realistically speaking, just mm -hmm. just that side will be probably 20, 24. But in the perfect weather, we will put the umbrellas on the uh, brick covered areas. So that will bring up to 40. I see. Um, I guess my feeling is you're not doing anything to the colonnade on the right. It's staying pretty much the same and you're gonna replicate that colonnade on the uh, left-hand side. Uh, um, excuse me, as I look at it on the right-hand side, you're keeping the left the same. So on the right-hand side, you're gonna, you're gonna add that same colonnade that's there. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I, frankly, I think you ought to put more umbrellas there. I don't see replicating something that is on a building that has an earlier looking facade. I'm not saying that both buildings weren't earlier, but this one has been modified uh, uh, in, in a more in a more late 19th century, mid to late 19th century mode. And I think replicating columns there and hiding this porch, which is a major element, just doesn't work. I don't see covering that area, I'm sorry. Well, uh, let me briefly um, go back and um, explain what I, so if you look at the pictures, uh, that was the picture I was talking about, the historic picture in 19, I believe it was 19, early 1900s, it was 1915 or 1920. The one on the right side with the four, the, if you go a little bit right, please. Yep, and the picture on the top that shows that that area was covered. So we're not... It was covered? I don't see that. If you look at the left side. I see all the way to the, I see all the way to the, uh... To the right cupboard, I've frankly I have no problem with that. The problem I have is in front of the Victorian-looking uh, building. I don't see anything covered there. This where's the covering? On the left side. Um, I mean, I can't play with the mouse, but I can. Uh, if you, yep, exactly there. That is a covering. Correct. I think that's a door <laughs> entrance. That's a doorway. Yeah, that's not a that's not a total covering of that area at all. Yeah, there's no covering there. Um, anyway, that's my my opinion is that it's inappropriate to put to put a a, um, um, a the same colonnade uh, here on the uh, on the other side. I just think it really buries that that door. You call it a porte cochere coming out. I think it just buries it, and I I just don't think it's right for that area. And I think you ought to put more umbrella uh, tables with umbrellas there. Sure, um, respect to your um, decision. I mean, uh, but if you put the umbrella, it will not be practical on a winter time when it snows outside. Most of my clientele requested to sit outside, even when it was snowing, when it, even when it, when it was storm. So, however, umbrella is not practical to cover. 
even in the rain time either. So when, when we're gonna put the uh, cover on the left side of the building, we will make sure that there's heating area, heating area that will directly heat the seating areas as well, <clears throat> if that makes sense. I understand where you're coming from. I still don't like the idea. I, I might add that that um, you know my impression of the front of the entrance into the handicap area, you know that's a, that's a gem, and we've taken great pains in preserving that. And I think the walkthrough this morning illustrated the fact that that we're not touching that, and the roof remains at the roof line and goes across from left to right, and we're preserving that front entrance. I agree with you that. That's beautiful. We're just adding a covered area that can be heated and, and used practically for dining. You're, you're burying it in the colonnade that doesn't have anything to do with it. That's my problem. You can preserve it all you want, but if you if you bury it with those columns on either side, it just doesn't work. I'm sorry. Well, let me, let me suggest that we, we have, I think there's two columns on either side. One of the end, you know, from that front entrance, we probably could redesign that to eliminate the columns and still support that. Um, we would need one at the end, you know, to hold up the the roof, but we could eliminate um, those two columns. If, you know, that's a good picture uh, because that shows the column. You know, and they're, they're probably 25 feet apart. Uh, so we could eliminate that column to the left. We would have to um, <laughs> structurally try to support up that right hand end, you know, with a, with a column, uh, you know, if that would be of any value or any, any value in your opinion. Luis, I think several of us have comments if you, if you want to just move through the yeah, answers, not yeah, to interrupt yeah. you folks, but. No, that's fine. Hey, Paul. Any comments? Yeah, do, do we have any kind of a drone perspective? I don't mean literally, but do we have a drawing from the sky that shows the roofed area before and the roofed area after? No. No, okay. I'm not aware of any. <clears throat> so in, in this drawing that Heather's put up, uh, what exactly is existing? Is this all existing or is the red? Well, tell me what I'm looking at. Yeah, that, that drawing, the, the red is the, um, the existing that's there now, the patio that was put in, that's yeah. the patio. And the gray shows the, um, the new covered deck area. Okay, but is all of that new quote new covered deck area literally new there is no roof whatever no roof overhang or anything over that area because i thought part of it was covered yeah no there's no roof that's over that area and, and so either there or over the over the front over the front right. of the salon that's so what we're going to achieve yeah, so from this perspective, is this where you're saying you would pick up the 24 seats? Correct, that's the area that, correct. Up to 40, but the, that's the total of max. That includes umbrellas out on, on the brick area or not? That includes the left side. Um, again, I didn't put the umbrella number because umbrella is not practical. Um, Understood. Not but either. How many just in here, in there? Well, realistically, in that part, I can put up to 12 to 16. That's the realistic, but. What are you calling that part? All of the gray? Correct. That's up left to right, everything, or just in the center where you're circling? Well, the, the circle that you, you are circling right now, that is the area that we can do 12, 16. Okay. What about the, in front of the salon? Is that included in the tour? Yeah, what about, is that a seating area? Yes. Correct. Okay. And, on, and on the left, as we're looking at this above Domus Inc, is that an additional seating area? 
we have the settings there that's already there and that's the color yeah, that's, uh, okay okay so that's why i'm saying total max can be 40 without umbrellas and umbrella we experienced that it's not practical um nobody wants to sit on the umbrella except the summertime in the winter time most of people especially when the american was the the delta the variant of the COVID was hitting hard people they were demanding to sit outside and yeah i understand, I understand. so um, to, to be clear and, and uh, Alec, correct me if i'm wrong we're by adding the covered areas we're adding 20 seats that's no max will be 16 if the, the covered yes max 20 max 20 okay so that's all we're we're adding is 20 existing and we're only adding in front of the salon and then in front of the correct the handicapped entrance 20. so i mean the 30 second version of my view is that i i favor allowing you to have more seating but I, I empathize with Dennis's view as regards the perspectives from the street. And I, I, I don't know how to get, a, to get good purchase on that visual because I don't think the photograph, um, I don't think the photograph shows us enough. So I'm for once ambivalent here and wanting to listen to my colleagues. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, thank Henry. You. While we are looking at this in plan, and I want to make sure that all my colleagues understand that everything that is gray is not necessarily covered. For example, um, exactly. Yes. Yep, exactly. That is, that is not covered. Correct. Um, if you could go back... Heather, if you could go back to the photograph, perhaps the one with the cars. Thank you. Um, I would like to start by saying how much I think the lighting and the outdoor seating of umbrellas, however precariously they're interwoven with the existing landscape, um, have contributed wonderfully to the feeling of this end of Monument Square. So. I, I like the idea of your having uh, a more active street frontage. I'm not convinced that uh, having elderly people dining outdoors in a blizzard is a good idea or necessarily something that the Historic District Commission should be commenting upon. The reason I wanted this picture up is because I think it's very important to note how the house comes all the way down to the, to the ground. It is uninterrupted. It has pilasters. It has, uh, yes, it had a, uh, a little covering over the door to the far left, but the, the porch, odd as it is, as a 19th century gesture, stands out and stands out well. And to the right of that building, you, as you turn the corner, the pilasters are very architectural. They come all the way to the ground. So when you hit a 1970 hair salon edition, um, if you, I, I think you could do all kinds of things in front of that, as long as the building in between, the, the main sort of Victorian house is allowed to come all the way to the ground without a, a new roof in there to interrupt that. And the elevation, if you look at it flat on as a drawing, suggests that it's not going to be an interruption. But you are, as three people have already said, you're going to lose the porch as a physical element. And if you bring that all the way to the ground, I, I like this photograph because it shows a very simple landscape solution that makes all of that area out to the street much more navigable to people than it is today with its very complicated changes in level steps and uh, inter bricks weaving in and out around little trees. So <laughs> I do think that there are options for you to do what Dennis described as adding umbrellas to really expand the amount of seating, although that won't work in the dead of winter. 
to the far right of this building where the 1970s salon is added. I think you could do all sorts of things there. You could bring this out much farther, but adding a replica of what is the Colonial Inn on the far left over near Lowell Street with fluted columns to that 1970 frontage makes no sense to me at all. Changing the door, putting in the windows, moving those things around. I think you can do that as long as you like, but interrupting that corner of the building and the way the Victorian building comes all the way to the ground physically, I think is an issue. If you want to build something in front of the salon, I think it could come out farther, but it shouldn't necessarily, it necessarily should not hit physically the, the uh, house next door. I know that that's a lot of comments, but basically I'm saying leave the house alone pay a lot of attention to the way the, the ground levels work in, in terms of your movement back and forth and think about what you're doing in front of the shed. And that way you, you keep these buildings distinct from one another. You don't put a, um, a early 19th century fluted column in front of a 1970 hair salon for, for starters. So I would, I would uh, suggest substantial reworking of the proposed scheme. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, Peter, comments? Uh, thank you, Luis, and thank you, Henry. I'm just gonna build on what Henry was saying. I actually personally don't object to having covered space in front of the house, but I think, I just sent Heather, I'm just Googling, there's a, there's a photo of the inn from this perspective from 1908. And to the right, before the hair salon was added, there's a kind of, I'm not even sure how to describe it. And I don't know if you got that photo, Heather, but um, there's a covered area that um, looks like it goes into a back addition somehow. And you can tell that, uh, my point here is that it's, it's subordinate to the, to the entry out in front of the building. So it's a covered, it looks like a large itch porch area but it's and i'm not even sure that's the right kind of architecture but it's not to say that it can't be done it just must be subordinate it can't carry the same lines i think that's part of what's confusing and i i frankly agree with uh, with what henry just said about that you can do whatever you want in front of the the little addition but do you see the covered area there mm -hmm. to the right so uh, what i'm imagining is pulling that kind of thinking it's too heavy and it's too dark but pulling do you see how it's subordinate to the main entrance in a big way just as the porch in front of the left part of the building is much more subordinate and frankly this might be an opportunity to do something contemporary you know something that's just steel columns and a you know a super thin roof line made of glass or something i don't i don't really know I, it's not our we, we're not we get in trouble every time we suggest things but do you see what i'm saying that essentially allows the the building to read just like it is but then has this subordinate kind of porch covering on either side which which i think we're all saying the same thing really shouldn't have the same vocabulary as the as the architecture to the left so no fluted columns or what have you but it, just the way that this is done as a, a sort of a an assemblage of pieces that go with this particular piece of architecture. So um, anyway, I all I essentially what I would say is I don't necessarily object to covered areas, but I would say that the architecture of whatever covers it really has to be subordinate or in contrast to contemporary. How, but but very kind of quiet and and. Um, uh, I'm not sure I'm saying I'm saying the same thing over and over again. So I think I'll stop talking. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Could I just pick up on what Peter said? Um, sure. you know, during the course of the design, we did consider uh, that salon becoming contemporary, much like you know the museum down the road. Totally different. If that was, if we go back to our old right. sketches, <laughs> it, it would if we did something contemporary on that. Um, you would you support putting a somehow a covered roof over that 
in a contemporary fashion to cover. Well, I'll get us into all kinds of trouble if yeah. I say yes, no, or maybe at this point. We have to. We have <laughs> to. See. We, we need to see. Yes. You have to see something. Yeah. Yeah. But I think. But, but my my point really is that a, a something that's intentionally contrasting on the on the older architecture and something that's just a little bit more harmonious and less referential to the existing building on the salon side. It's okay that they all look different because frankly, there are three different buildings here to begin with. So they really shouldn't be continuous. Even if the seating is continuous, that's different. And also, can I add one more thing? Um, Mr. Henry said that we can do anything we would like with the salon. If we add, well, salon, first of all, was added in the 1970s, it has nothing to do with the history. Um, however, if we add more sitting, if salon will stick out and so the right side of the building, obviously there's three his, historic buildings here. There's not, there's three historic buildings. And if we add salon, in front of salon, more sitting, and in front of the, the end, more sitting, the building in the middle, will look ugly. I mean, it will kind of stick out, um, if that makes sense. You want more uh, seating in front of there too. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, I ask a question? I, are you assuming I, that Omicron is going to go on forever and people are going to want to sit out in all kinds of weather? I mean, aren't, is, this thing's going to go away and people are going to want to go back inside again. I don't see them even under heat lamps unless they're under dire circumstances wanting to sit out there in the winter just doesn't make sense to me maybe um, you know something i don't know uh, i'm not assuming omicron will go forever but it's been with us two two and a half years and it's still challenging us so today we have we're dealing with omicron tomorrow we're going to deal with something else and it just continuously this is a life it's going to happen uh but our goal and purpose just to make sure that we preserve the history at the same time we serve uh, local community well and also outsiders when they come in it will bring a lot of impact to the economy of the town let, let me let me move the discussion a little bit i i will just make a, a couple of comments i agree with uh, the perspective of uh, henry on uh, on the two different buildings and and dennis uh, from a historical point of view my conception is that uh, there are two different buildings here and that uh, each one of them has its own identity and therefore uh, trying to find uh, uh, some unification strategy by which we have uh, a covered terrace or whatever we want to call it, um, making a, a statement that almost makes both buildings uh, appear to be similar, I don't think that that respects the uh, historic references that uh, those buildings have. Uh, so I am of the opinion that uh, uh, we should keep both buildings uh, uh, with as two very separate entities, and that that can be maintained uh, if you if you have needs for for accommodating guests. Uh, there are many many ways that that can be done with uh, umbrellas or with uh, uh, canvas uh, roofs that are uh, temporary, etc. And all of them are interesting architectural solutions. The 1970 building, I find it uh, very troubling. See, and I wish that you came with a proposal by which that uh, building simply vanishes or gets replaced by something that it's uh, architectonically valuable, be it uh, a, a modern structure or it be um, a modern structure that uh, evokes an old structure or it be a, a, a replica of an old structure. Um, so that, that's my take. Uh, I think that I am just grabbing from what everybody else is saying, but that, that's the way that I uh, conceptualize it. I'm gonna ask for some uh, public uh, comments right now. Uh, Melinda, you go, go ahead first. Yeah, and then, I, I, thank you. I'd just like to add here, I think we're having trouble visualizing this. You haven't really given us a good enough rendition of what it would look like finished. Um, the uh, you know pencil colored colored pencil drawing doesn't really tell us. It's very hard for us to look at that. I don't see that leaving that whole other building and then adding something at the very end is going to make it very easy for you to serve people, which is you know at your tables and. 
I just don't see how that could work. Um, you're really going to have them come out of another door. I mean, it's pretty far away com compared to where the current uh, meal service is underneath that um, porch. So I, I think you're obviously doing this uh, to improve your business. Um, if, if it doesn't do that in the end, if you can't get enough seating, there's not going to be any point in doing it at all. Um, I think if you were to show us a little more um, realistic <laughs> view of what it could look like, and, and maybe you want to come in with an, another um, different idea and, um, in terms of making it more contemporary, I, I, um, that's fine. But I would also like to see a better um, viewpoint of what you're currently trying to do. Okay, let's uh, thank you, uh, Melinda. Let's go to public comments. Any public comments? There are no public comments. <laughs> okay, well, I my my take is that uh, uh, there have been the issues that have been raised. I think that are are legitimate, and I don't know if uh, if the uh, the architect and the uh, the applicant want to uh, take uh, uh, all these comments into account and then uh, sort of uh, uh, try to incorporate those thoughts into a different design. Um, I don't know if, uh, if uh, the members of the commission are in a position that they can uh, um, uh, approve uh, this uh, project as it stands. Uh, so I, I, as long as we collectively agree I will mind uh, giving a little bit of uh, additional time, especially to, to uh, incorporate the comments of uh, both Dennis Fiore and, and Henry and Peter, uh, and basically everybody else, because you know, we are finding a, a substantial obstacle between two separate buildings that are going to be more or less unified. And um, we are also finding a little bit of trouble in trying to uh, adopt uh, um, material justification or putting more uh, spaces uh, at the expense of very, very important historical references that, that uh, from my view, have been reinforced. You see, because the, the, the photograph from 1908 shows these two beautiful buildings, one separate from the other, each one and you will ask the other one. So I think that we have to take that into account. So the, the options that we have is that we can take this matter to a vote or we can continue and uh, it will be up to the applicant whether we should continue. And if you want to continue, it doesn't have to be for the next meeting, it can be for a meeting in the future uh, with a time lapse that you uh, uh, request and certainly will be granted. So it's gonna be up to you right now. <laughs> Thank you. May I make a suggestion, Luis? Yes. May I, may I still speak? Sorry to interrupt. Sure. So I've just been, I'm sorry if I've been doing this on, on screen, but I've been looking at um, large inns in New England, Ocean House, Weekapog Inn, Shelter Harbor, Wentworth by the Sea. Most of these large inns have a similar strategy with different pieces of architecture, but big wraparound porch seating areas for either just sitting on a rocking chair and at the ocean or eating. And they, 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 some of them have some interesting strategies that don't essentially try to unify, but really address each piece of architecture individually, but with a consistent seating area. I might recommend that the applicant just take a look at some of those and try to synthesize some of our suggestions, because I, I frankly do not object to covered seating in the areas being shown. It's just the way they're, they're delineated. So. I would frankly encourage a continuum, a continuation of this uh, application, because I think you're on to something really interesting. And I probably just got myself into trouble, Heather. Did I? Can I recommend a continuance? No, actually, uh, we'll we'll let Mr. Adamson uh, ask for a continuance. Paul, were you going to say something? <laughs> yeah, I, I no, I wasn't going to say anything. I was going to move that we continue the matter to such date as the applicant wishes within reason. Well, um, no, we need to continue it to a specific date. Well, I know, but he can identify the date is all I mean. So our, our next well, meeting is March um, 
the next meeting is March 16th. And then after that, the next meeting is April 7th or April 21st. Well, I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Adamson whether he would be uh, willing to continue uh, the application to the dates mentioned 16th, uh, the dates in April. Um, and uh, which date would he want and whether that is agreeable to him? The other option is that we ask for a vote. Uh, for sure. Um, sure. Um, first of all, I want to uh, appreciate for every one of every single one of you for feedback. I believe uh, any feedback will help us to be perfect, and we take feedbacks uh, very seriously. And we want to improve um, the same strategy that we have for a customer service. We have the same strategy for the historic part of the inn as well. So any feedback is welcome and we take that feedback professionally and we will work on it. And based on that, we would like to take the uh, continuous, obviously. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, what was the, the, your voice was breaking up. What was the options, the dates that we had? The yeah. next meeting is March 16th. And then following that, we have April 7th or April 21st. March 16th is a month. March 16th should be fine, I believe. Yeah. March 16th will be fine, I believe. And Great. we will get more prepared for that and make sure that you have more um, pictures so you can visualize more um, what we are willing to do. Thank you, Alec. Well, I will move then that we continue the application for 48 Monument Square to our meeting on March 16th. And I'll second it. Okay, uh, Dennis. Yes. Uh, Henry? Aye. Peter? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm an aye. So Thank you all. we'll see you in about a month. Thank you so very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank project. you for the input. Appreciate it. You bet. Okay, so we are going to continue to the next uh, application, which I cannot see because my screen. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> which uh, will be a 295 Barrett's uh, Mill Road. A, to install a direct uh, vent for a gas uh, fireplace. Is the applicant here? Hey, I don't know if you can, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm representing uh, Renata Gunderman, the owner of uh, the property. Um, I'm her general contractor. She. Uh, didn't want to risk the Zoom phone call to Amtrak's Wi-Fi, so she asked me to, to attend in her place. Um, and I believe along with the application, she submitted the specifications for the fireplace she intends to install. Um, and I also understand after reading the paperwork that um, there's one condition still to satisfy on the previous special permit. Um, and of course, we've made a provision for that going forward. Okay, um, Heather, do we have any plans or any photos that we can see? Okay, can you take us uh, with the uh, with your, uh, help of the photograph to describe what it's being done, what's going to be done? <laughs> yes, so, um, the appliance uh, spec was also included. It's you know a gas, natural gas uh, fireplace, uh, which of course has a direct vent system. Uh, the vent, uh, Renata has uh, put a little mark on that um, elevation. Yeah, yeah. Um, to give you an approximate location, I have to say that that's a little low. Uh, it's probably going to be about 18 inches higher than that. If you picture actually where their first floor ceiling would be, uh, the vents, yeah, exactly. It's gonna come out more uh, in that area. Uh, the vent itself uh, is shown in the specifications on page 11. It's about uh, 16 inches square. 
uh, and made of aluminum, um, and of course can be painted. Okay. So that's really the only change uh, that will be uh, visible from the exterior, you know, the addition of this vent. Okay. How, how big is this vent? Um, uh, it's about 16 inches square. Okay. All right. So it looks like a fairly functional uh, intervention on, on a wall. Let's uh, go uh, around the pike. Uh, Paul, you want to start in comments? Um, yeah, I, I don't have any objection to it. I think maybe we would want to provide that either whatever material is appropriate, but it ought to be consistent with the color of the wall, I would think. But other than that, I don't have a problem with the gas vent. Uh, thank you, Paul. I mean, Melinda, I'm sorry. Yeah. I agree with Paul. I, I think it's fine if you can uh, paint whatever metal material it is. It'd probably be better than um, to leave it shiny, but um, I have no problem with you installing it. Uh, thank you, Melinda. Peter? No objections. Uh, Henry? Yeah, I, I went by and looked at the house and I think it'll be fine. And Dennis? Fine with me. As long as it's painted to match the house, I think it's great. And I am with uh, everybody else. So I would look for a motion. Uh, any comments from the public? Sorry. <laughs> any public comments? Okay, in the absence of uh, public comments, uh, then I will ask for a motion. Um, for um, I'll uh, I'll move Luis that we approve the uh, application for work for the installation of a direct vent for gas fireplace at 295 Barrett's Mill Road uh, as submitted. I would like to stipulate that we could see a final diagram of the actual location for record. Uh, is that possible? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I've lost the applicant's name here. Yes, that's that's no problem. Um, I mean, we could give you a, a, a photo with a scaled representation of the vent and some dimensions to, you know, the window, say. I, mean, I think that, that, would, yeah. that would be fine. And I, I think, and I haven't seen the specs on the website, but I trust you can submit those for the for the um, actual vent itself. Peter, uh, Peter, would you accept an amendment that requires the color to be consistent with, not identical to, but consistent with the gray? Yes. Friendly amendment number one. <laughs> okay, so we need a second. I'll second it. Okay, so uh, Dennis, you voted yes. Aye, Henry? yes. <laughs> Aye. Peter? Yes, aye. Uh, Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I am an aye. So we're all set. Uh, and uh, you will uh, have to check with, uh, with Heather to supply all the, the specs as I've been discussed, especially the colored chips and the paints and things of that sort. Understood. So, yeah. OK, thank, thank you. you very much. OK, thank you. Thank you. The, Next application is uh, 77107 Lower Road, uh, the Main Street Historic District, to install signage. And this is uh, Millbrook Terry Condo Association. Luis, you skipped you one. Skip 23 monuments. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. Richard Byrne, 23 monuments. I, I uh, I'm going too fast. I apologize. <laughs> uh, 23 Monument Street uh, to install signage. <laughs> Anybody here from uh, 23 Monument? This is the Colwell Banker. Hello? I'm Hello. here. Can you see me? Yes. We can yeah. hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. I raised my hand, but you know, my name is Vicki Ashmead. I'm actually on the Zoom meeting, but um, I guess somebody has to let me in. I'm Vicki Ashmi, and I'm standing in for Richard Burke. Okay. No, okay. We, we can hear you. We can hear you very oh. well. Okay. Well, I'm representing uh, Richard Burke for Cabo Banker, and we have um, signs that we are just refacing. 
I have a picture I could put up that I don't have access. I mean, do I have control? I think we have them. Okay. Yeah, they're up. Can, can, can you see our screen, uh, Vicky? Yes, I can. Because we, we have the, the signs up if you want to comment on them. And okay. Where they're going to go so, and materials and things like that. Yes, thank you. So basically, sign A here is um, it shows the existing. Uh, we're just changing the hanging portion. And down here, they're putting the blue with their new uh, star and the CB logo. And then also on uh, sign B, it shows at the top the existing sign. And we're using the same dimensions with our new logo. And they're going to be made out of um, HDU foam. And it has the square footage is here. What what's the height of the of the sign? I'm sorry. The, the height uh, of the of the uh, slab where behind where the sign is. You say eleven inches. That's an eight, eleven inches by eleven inches high. Okay, one hundred and twenty. Uh, and you mentioned something about the material. What's the material that's going to be used? They're using HDU foam. HDU foam. Okay. And how do those sizes compare with what it's already there? They're the same. They're exact. They're exactly the same, including the square ones yeah, and the rectangular one on the front. I'm sorry? Uh, all, the, all the signs, including the, the rectangular ones and the long rectangular one and the one that is square, they are exactly the same uh, dimensions as the existing ones. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Um, so the only thing that's really changing it's the the lettering and the, and the style of the of the sign, correct? Correct. Okay, uh, I'm going to go around and ask for any comments, uh, Melinda. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, sidebar conversation. Uh, I don't have a problem with this. It doesn't look too large to me. And I, um, I mean, all the realtors are getting new signs now, like new colors, uh, getting more contemporary. So, um, yeah, but I don't have a problem with this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dennis? I have no problem with this. Okay, we're going to go to Paul. Thank you. Is, is the existing color also black and gold or whatever this is? I can't really no. see. No, the existing is black and gold, and the proposed is the blue and white. I would do this on a basket. Because okay. it's like a little sandwich. So what we're, what we're looking at here is theoretically blue and white. Yes, sir. Even though it looks black and gold, yeah. Okay, I, I don't <laughs> have any objection. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Henry. Uh, I don't object either. Although it's interesting that the in the in the guidelines, the historic district guidelines for signage, it says it discourages the use of logos. And then it goes on with a few sentences that hint that they will somehow usher in the end of civilization. Um, these logos have been there. Uh, there's also an, in those guidelines a suggestion that it be a serif typeface, which is just purposefully old fashioned. I think these are fine the way they are. I do think that it would have been better to know that blue and white is what is intended rather than if Small I may system. interject, it's not going to be blue and white. It's going to be black and gold. It says it right there in the, um, the wording. 
Right, that's what I, I thought. Our other locations, we do have blue and white, but right. they're sticking with the blue, I mean, the black and gold that, that has been there. And I think the black is, yeah. a, is a crushed glass. It's small. That's also in the legend underneath. Anyway, I don't object at all. Hey, thank you, Henry. Peter. Well, just to reinforce that, Henry, we already know civilization is on its way to an end, so this really isn't going to accelerate things too much. I think you're right. <laughs> uh, I really have no objections. I think this is fine. And before civilization ends, I will rush to say that I have no objections. <laughs> so any public <laughs> comments? If there are no public comments, then I will ask for a motion on... 23 Monument Street. I'm, I move that we approve the application for certificate of, for certificate of appropriateness to replace the existing signage with the black and gold as submitted. I'll second that. Okay, um, I'm gonna go backwards, uh, Paul. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Peter. Aye. Henry? Aye. Dennis? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Good luck getting it done. Thank you. Thank you for all your time. Welcome. Have a Thank good you. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> all right. The next uh, application is actually Millbrook Parry Convo Association, 27107 Lower Road. It's install Signish. And um, yeah. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Jim White. Nice to see everybody. Uh, Mike um, uh, Leary is uh, our sign uh, designer. He's manufactured the signs for years. He's on tonight, too, to answer any technical questions that you may have. Um, what we're doing is um, coming really out of the, uh, out of the pandemic uh, with all the issues the restaurants are having as we're uh, you probably noticed Trail Zen Cafe has been closed for about a month. We're going to reopen next month uh, under the new name Nosh by Concord Market. And so we're associating the Concord Market name with the, uh, with the restaurant and uh, also the Concord Market uh, signage imagery. Um, and, and you can see what it looks like. The uh, locations of the signs are... Uh, exactly where they are now. I think the areas are pretty substantially uh, equal. Uh, Mike comment on that. Obviously the uh, round sign out on Lowell Road is replaced by a rectangular sign. But uh, you can see on these uh, these pylon signs, the, the, the sign replacing the Trails End Cafe sign is basically the same sign with different wording. So that's what we want to do is replace the existing Trails End Cafe sign with a new Nosh by Market. Market market sign, and uh, that's it. Uh, very good. Let's um, uh, go around the screen. Melinda, comments. You are muted. M Melinda, you are muted. Sorry, uh, I think it's fine. I, it's a very modest change and I don't think there's anything objectionable about it. Oh, oh, here, uh, I hadn't seen these before, these nosh. Um, hmm. um, I've got to look at dimensions before I... Oh, so it's the same, the nosh is almost the same size as the trail's end was, right? Same is true there. The book, Terry. Okay, oh, existing and, and proposed. So that's that's a wash. Okay. Um, the one place, could you just back up a second where you were when I saw the very first Nosh sign? Uh, keep going, keep going. 
uh, a little more uh, the the that the one that's on the on the street. That one, yeah, the proposed one. Oh, so that the trails end there is existing. Okay, and the Nosh one's about the same size. Okay, yeah, then I have no problems with this. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, Dennis? No problems, fine with me. Uh, Paul, thanks, Paul. Yeah, uh, ever willing to display my ignorance where others are not, what is a <laughs> Nosh? <laughs> Nosh, uh, no, nosh means to sort of eat or nip, nibble at. It, uh, it's a colloquialism. So you mean like Peter does during the meetings and just yes. nibbling? Have you ever been to New York it. City? I got to yeah. take you to it. There are a couple of you're, you're not should have deli. Right. Ah, I should take you to deli. Okay. New York. All right. Well, so much for any personal embarrassment to me, but <laughs> I can't say. I mean, there's nothing particularly classic about this sign, which obviously isn't, in, I mean, is intended. It's intended to be, what, newer, newer, um, funkier. It's I don't really like it, but that's probably not a reason to deny it. Uh, what, what's the concept here? Educate me. Well, it, 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 it really is it's building on a conquered market sign. If, if you look at yeah. the other it's the same, the same uh, uh, signage for conquered market and the words conquered market. and. So we're trying to create a brand, and and that's the reason. That's the reason for it. And frankly, it's a little more modern than some of the other signage in town. But it's like Concord Market. Um, okay. Well, I'm I'm not wild about it, but um, so I want to. Uh, I won't make further comment. I want to listen to others. Thank you, Paul uh, Henry. The existing sign is lit at night, is it not? It is. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing that the guidelines discourage, but I don't, I don't agree with worrying about that here. I, I would support all of these. Uh, thank you, Henry. Peter? Uh, I only have two quick comments. One is, um, will the 23 karat gold actually read? It looks, it washes out a little bit in these images. I don't know if you should consider a slightly darker gold uh, or something like that. I, do you know what I'm saying? And that might just be the graphic. And maybe that's a question for the signage. I, th I think, it may. Mike Leary, what do you think about that? Yeah, pretty, <clears throat> pretty much it's trying to emulate gold leaf in a, in a graphic and there's just no way to do that so it's kind of a a twist on it with a little gradient shine coming off from it so to speak it it, it should read fine okay uh and then really only the question is when is the menu going to be available online <laughs> uh but i have no further comment st stay tuned okay thank you thank you uh, peter i i would make a few comments. Uh, in regards to the current sign that we have on the screen, I think that that sign is aesthetically very unappealing. I don't think that uh, uh, the, the sign uh, conveys anything uh, that you would be curious about. It it's, uh, has some evokes a little bit of the, of the silhouette of Manhattan uh, that has been used for the same purpose in, uh, in different settings. And I don't see anything with the Concord Market. I think that the idea of mixing the Concord Market uh, with a, a traditional uh, lettering and design, it's uh, very appropriate, but I don't think that this is being accomplished over here. I think that the, the, the potential of that design of having a, a whimsical word like nosh uh, paired with a, a very traditional Concord Market that if we remember uh, was started initially as a farmer's market, that, that, that was the initial conception. I think that would be much better. Uh, and I don't think that the colors actually benefit any of the historical references that we may try to find uh, in looking at that sign. The old sign of the trails and, you know, has some greens and birds and things that you may refer something to nature. But the, the Nosh sign, I really can't find anything that I can connect it to. So I, I don't uh, agree that this, preserves any uh, historical reference or, or has any historic inspiration, not even 
as a modern intervention to accomplish that purpose. And then the second thing, it's uh, if you, Heather, if you wanna show the big sign that it's in front of the market right now. That sign, that, that, that's it, exactly. Well, or just uh, show it, uh, uh, go down a little bit. Uh, show the other one, the picture that, that I told you not to show. Exactly, and just show the top so we can see what, what are the, the heights. I, I just want to, exactly. Uh, those signs are humongous. They are so humongous that they distract uh, the visuals from what is a very well accomplished, a very well done building, which architectonically it's very good and very appealing. And uh, it's actually, uh, uh, from my perspective, a substantial contribution to, to the fabric of uh, the town. But that sign in there, it's just like a huge uh, sore intervention that it's accomplishing nothing because it doesn't uh, convey any more information that it would com convey if it was much smaller. So I think that this should be an opportunity to uh, rethink about the science of these uh, signs and make this uh, uh, proposed sign about the half of what it is. I, I can guarantee you that people don't go to the comfort market because that sign stops them. You see, at best probably they will crash into it at some point. But that, those are my comments. I don't think that my comments should be taken uh, in the context of that, I were, that we're not going through, that I would not be agreeing uh, with this application. But I think that uh, uh, as a matter of, um, uh, of a, uh, citizenry, uh, uh, Mr. White should uh, uh, consider these comments and, and uh, act upon them, because I think that it's really important that, that we do this. You see, that's, that's about the only thing wrong with the whole thing. The, the color of the other side of the notion and everything, well, it's a matter of aesthetics and what we understand where it's a historic reference. So I kind of go much further over there. So uh, I'm gonna ask for any public comments. Is, is there any? And uh, if there are no public comments, I'll ask Mr. White if he wants to make any final comments before we put this matter into a vote. Uh, only to say that I, I appreciate all your comments and I can certainly understand that the uh, that this sign and the, the, the wording on it are uh, perhaps not traditional uh, Concordian, but I, I think um, beyond that, uh, we would like to have the sign approved if you're willing to do it. But thank you very much for the comments. Well, okay. So I will hear, I will ask for a motion to approve or deny. You need to see if there's public comment. Oh, I asked for public comments. I don't think that there were any. That's when I went back to this point. <laughs> Are there any public comments? <laughs> okay, so let's um, hear a motion. Why don't I move, uh, Luis, I'm gonna move that we approve the signage at uh, 77 to 107 Lowell Road, Millbrook Terry Condo Association as submitted. Any seconds? Melinda is second. Melinda is seconding. Okay, so yeah, I'm, second. I'm going to go um, uh, alphabetically backwards. Uh, Paul? Um, no. I, I know we have to join the 22nd century or whatever, but I, no, I don't like it. Okay, Melinda. Aye. Uh, uh, Peter? Aye. Uh, Henry? I will vote aye, but I am shocked that the size of the existing sign is in the range of 13 feet, and that I've never, maybe I'm so distracted by the sculpture that I've never noticed its size. <laughs> uh, Dennis? Aye. And uh, I'm going to vote no as a matter of principle. <laughs> so I think we have three votes in favor and two against. Is that correct, Heather? Yes. 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 
we do. Okay, so I, the motion it's approved, and um, good luck. <laughs> well, thank you. I hope, to... I, I hope I hope you like the food at least, even if you don't like the sound. I, I, I was <laughs> going to say that I'm, I'm looking forward to the menu. <laughs> I'm going to have to take Paul there right away. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I think that, I think that Paul and I should, should get first not. <laughs> and <he's> first. <laughs> thank you very much. Right, thank um, you. Let's uh, go to now uh, 2325 Langley Street, Kevin Hurley, Northbridge Monument, the Square Historic District, to demolish freestanding garage and carport. We construct front entrances, construct new walkways, remove, relocate, and replace windows. Replace doors, chimney, bulkheads, deck and stairs, remove, reconstruct, and replace roof, constructs new attached garage and sunroom, and constructs addition, remove deck and stairs and replace with a stone patio, relocate wires on the ground, replace other style lighting and light posts. Yeah, you're in short, demolish and rebuild. Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Mr. Hurley is here, I assume. <laughs> yes. So my name's Kevin Hurley. Good evening to all of you. I believe that Ben Nickerson is also on this. Ben Nickerson is the project architect. Um, the current building at 2325 Lang Street is a duplex. The frontmost portion of the building is known as 25 Lang Street. That was built in 1920 as a church. The rear portion of the building uh, known as 23 Lang Street, was built as an addition to the church in 1955. In 1976, the Board of Appeals granted a special permit to use the building as a two-family house. And in 2005, the freestanding garage and the carport were constructed. I think the most challenging thing about this property is the 1955 addition. Uh, obviously, that was done before there was a historic district, and many of the elements of that portion of the structure are inappropriate. We intend to make very few changes to the 1920 portion of the building and make significant changes to the 1955 portion of the building. If Heather could bring up the site plan. This site plan, and I'll just give you an overview of the major points, and then I'll ask Ben to walk us through the architecture. But this particular site plan shows that we're going to remove the freestanding garage, which is outlined in red at the left rear portion of the property. We're going to remove the carport, which is just to the left of the front of the building. We are going to remove the existing front entrance to the rear portion of the building. It's where the two buildings intersect at the corner and is outlined in red. We're going to remove one story additions at the back of the house and a deck at the back of the house. And on the right side of the house, we're going to remove a chimney and an existing deck. We're also going to remove excess pavement, which is shown in green. Uh, we are going to remove all the overhead wires we, including the wires from the street to the building, as well as all the cable TV wires, which somebody chose to run on the outside of the existing building. We're going to remove the white aluminum gutters and downspout, which are located on the original 1920 church building and change those to copper. We're going to remove the roof structure and first floor walls at 23 but nothing below the first floor walls at 23. And then we're going to attach in a garage on the left-hand side uh, of the building at 23, a sunroom behind that, an addition at the back of the house, and a very small addition to the right side of 23, as well as proposing a new deck on the right side of 25. Um, at this point, I think I'd like Ben Nixon to just discuss the architectural elements if Ben is on. Thanks, Ken. I think that Bill, uh, Ben is on. I think he's muted. Can Ben uh, hear us? 
help. If Ben is not there, uh, then yeah, I guess I am here. here. There he is. Oh, okay. okay now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> now we can hear it. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Heather, maybe you can bring up the first uh, elevation of the building, which I think would be sheet four, that elevation right there. That's the front elevation. Ben, you go right. ahead. All right. The, uh, the building section on the right is the existing church building um, as it is today. And we propose to keep the, uh, the existing front entrance but rebuild the lower portion, which was built out of concrete and has uh, suffered a lot of weather damage over the years. And we propose to construct it with granite. Um, we also uh, propose to replace the triple casement window on the first floor uh, because it's, um, it's single glazed and it's in kind of rough shape. Um, and we also propose to replace the casements uh, above in the uh, gable end with slightly larger unit and than the uh, than is there today to to give it a little better scale. We're also going to eliminate a pair of casement windows at, that currently uh, are above that uh, lower window because it just it becomes too many elements in that uh, cable end. On the right, you can see our proposed ad additional deck. Um, and at the moment, we're, we're proposing it to have a cable rail system uh, for the uh, railing because it would tend to disappear. On the left-hand side is uh, the existing 23 building which we are reconstructing from the first floor up. Um, we're constructing an entrance that would replicate the same kind of details that are found on the existing uh, entrance to 25. Um, to the left, you can see uh, the garage door of the proposed addition for the single car garage. We're also proposing to um, uh, eliminate the, the the existing roof on the 1955 section in the back is about a six and a half pitch roof. And we're proposing a roof that has the same pitch as the existing church building. I think if we go to the next slide, the next elevation, this is the elevation um, that is away from Monument Street. Um, and you can see on the left-hand side, the existing church building. Um, there's a series of windows. We are taking one of the window. There was a pair of windows where those two doors are shown. And we're going to um, put two door panels with two transom above it in the existing masonry opening. Um, I, I think I should comment that um, the existing church structure has a concrete block uh, foundation that re replicates rusticated stone. And then above that is uh, an ashlar um, finish kind of concrete block that replicates uh, ashlar stonework. And that is in good shape. And we propose not to do anything to that, uh, but preserve it. Also on that elevation, you can see a proposed bulkhead um, towards the rear of the, uh, exist the old church building. And between the bulkhead and the deck is currently a chimney that we proposed to remove. It was a chimney that was added at some time. The original structure, you can see the remnants of um, the original chimney that was actually inside the structure. Uh, but that had been taken down at some point previously. On the right-hand side is our new addition. Um, the lower level with the six over six windows exist. That's uh, concrete walls. Um, and above that point, we'll be reconstructing the structure. And you can see the new 
the new roof structure is, um, is indicated. We go to the next slide. This is a, the elevation on the opposite side, the side closer to Monument Street. To the right is the existing church building. We're making no changes to that elevation. But on the, to the right of that, you can see that the new proposed changes for um, the 1955 edition. Um, we've, we're using the same roof pitch as the existing church structure. Um, the, uh, and we've tried to uh, step the structure down on this, uh, on this elevation. As it can be seen, uh, it can be glimpsed from uh, Monument Street, and so the the garage is the garage gable end and uh, intersecting roof are lower than the roofs further back. You can see that a little better in the next slide, which is the rear elevation. Again, on the right, you can see the garage and sunroom. The central portion is the, um, the, the new roof and structure. And you can see uh, on the upper left, you can see the line of the existing church roof to give you a sense of its size. And we're adding a, a, a bulkhead for this unit on the lower left corner. Um, I think that just about does it. The, uh, we're going to go with clapboards for the, uh, for the new structure um, and with casement windows. Um, and the reason being on the casement windows, I think, is to, to um, not, not mimic the, the windows on the church, but um, they're more they're in keeping with what is there. Um, and I think that just about does it in terms of what, what, what we can see from the exterior of the building. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Ben. Uh, before we uh, make some comments, uh, it's perfectly clear that uh, we're going to need to have a site visit for this uh, application. Um, which uh, would happen, uh, you said that the next meeting would be March 16th, uh, uh, Heather? Yeah, March 16th, it's actually a Wednesday. Um, our meetings uh, schedule for March is kind of thrown off because of public hearings for town meeting. So we are meeting once in the month of March and it is a Wednesday meeting. Okay. Uh, do you think that it would be possible for uh, you be there on March 16th at 8 a.m. in the morning on a Wednesday? Um, this is Kevin Hurley speaking. I cannot be there on the 16th. I am leaving town on the 15th. We'll attend the meeting virtually, but I'm wondering if there's any date before the 15th that the commission could meet at the site. I think a site meeting is a good idea. Yeah, I would leave it that to the discretion of uh, the commissioners, whether they want to collectively commit to another time. Assuming that that is uh, yeah, appropriate uh, from town regulations. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. As long as we identify a date um, tonight that we're meeting and we can post it in time. So should we shoot for a Monday the 14th? Is that a good day? Any, any objections to uh, having a side visit at 8 a.m. in the morning? Monday the 14th of March. I, I will not make that date, Elise, okay. but that's okay. All right, well, then let's let's keep going backwards because you know, I don't see any reason why, uh, you know, I think that Saturday is important as long as a lot of people- well, I'm actually it. out of town until the 14th, so until I the, Okay, until the 14th. Okay, so, and uh, the applicant is out of town on the 15th, so it would have to be, um, you you said you are leaving on the fifteenth, or what will be the next time? No, I the I think it. I probably am not available before the sixteenth. <clears throat> between right. travel and work, I apologize. 
No, but um, I mean, for site uh, visit at least. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, Mr. Hurley, are you available after the 16th at when? You just said you are leaving on the 15th. Um, yes, I don't return until the end of March. I am available on the 14th. I suggest okay. you all go ahead without me, Luis. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's, uh, uh, I, I don't see any objections in the, by Paul or Dennis or Henry or. Henry. No, um, Luis, I, I'm not available at any time until right. the very end of March. Okay. I'm, so, I'm trying to see I'm, whether we're going to have a, a, a forum yeah. that that uh, can make some substantial impressions. Melinda, I can be at the site visit, but I can't be at the meeting in the evening. So there's almost no point in my on the on the 16th. No. No. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine on the 16th. Okay, if we were to do it way before the 16th, let's say on the 9th, uh, March 9th, would that uh, provide more flexibility? I know that Paul won't be here and uh, Peter probably will not be here either, but uh, uh, Henry has been very quiet. <laughs> so. I'm not going to Florida, so uh, I defer <laughs> to everyone else. Okay. Um, Melinda, you won't be here on March 9th uh, because you are uh, going to be somewhere I will else. Be, I will be here on March 9th, yes. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we do it on March 9th? No, I think that that would be a... Okay. Fine. Okay. So um, if we can set up, uh, uh, Heather will take care of that, setting up a meeting for March 9, a site visit for March 9 at uh, 2325 Lang Street. And that, um, will, that will be at eight o'clock? Eight o'clock in the morning, yes. That's and, fine uh, with me also. There are some structures, the one that are the proposed additions that are in yellow, is that correct? That are different from the outline of the current structure. I am correcting that assumption or I'm doing the... Yes, if you're looking at the site plan, Heather, if you could put the site plan up. Yeah. No, what I was going to say is that if you have any any structures that are going uh, beyond what it's already there, there are some structures that you're taking down. So that doesn't really matter, but the ones that you are adding to the current structure, if you can stake them on the ground, so we have an idea of what their dimensions are, that's usually very helpful. Yes, we will have that staked um, by the meeting on the 9th. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna uh, go around uh, top to bottom. Uh, Dennis, any comments? Uh, no, I think I'll wait till the site visit. I, I um, have to say I'm not in love with the windows on this building, but that's what they, that's what they inherited. So I think that's what they have to work with. <clears throat> it's a little strange to have these uh, I don't know, what are they, uh, six over six windows uh, down below and then these big panes above, but we'll, we'll see more of this on the site visit. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Henry? Uh, it's, it's an oddly treeless street and uh, so much thought has gone into removing wires and so forth. I wonder whether the landscape plan is being developed further. And I have a Mr. Nickerson question which is that the drawings, which are very good, show no interruptions anywhere on the roof. So what I don't know is whether you have planned any chimneys, toilet vents, things like that, that are gonna to start to complicate your elevations. Well, there we will should... be, yeah, there'll be no chimneys. Um, there, will, there will be a to toilet vent. We can, uh, we can combine all the vents and, into one and pierce the roof in one location. So I might comment about that a little bit. This is Kevin Hurley again. If you look at the left side of the building and you're standing on the side, side on the left side of the building, you can see five vent pipes going up through the roof. Um, all five of those vent pipes will be removed. We're gonna re-roof uh, the entire structure and the vent pipe will be someplace in the right rear portion of the building. 
uh, there'll be two vent pipes, one for each unit, but they will not be visible from uh, the left side or from Monument Street, like the five existing pipes. And then Heather, if you just put up the landscape plan for a second. You know what it's labeled It's the second sheet. So I'm looking at where floor plans, lighting. It's called uh, the South oh, there, That's it. So on this particular plan, we show the most significant plantings that will occur along Lang, Lang Street. And I believe it's in the, in the fourth note, I say that there'll be additional plantings, but the plantings that I was trying to show here were the ones that I felt were most important. And there's relatively large size plant materials going in. Uh, it's one of the things that I, that I feel very strongly about is the landscaping. So just to the left of the front door to the old church portion, there's a tree that would be 14 to 15 feet in height. Similarly to the right front corner of that, there'd be a tree that would be 12 to 15 feet in height. And then going back on the right-hand side, there's trees that range from shrubs at four to five feet to trees that range from six to I'm trying to read my own plan, which is a small plan. I think it's 15 feet also. And then the, on the opposite side, on the left-hand side, there are two substantial holly trees that we'd put in that area to further break up the view from Lang Street to this property. Thank you. Thank you. I think it'll be an addition. Hey, thank you, Henry. Uh, Peter. Uh, I well, I, this is one of the the most wonderfully odd buildings I've ever seen in Concord, and that is the cutest little carport in Christendom. Really, uh, so I'm almost sorry to see it go, but I I think that overall these will be uh, uh, very very uh, handsome modifications to this exist, existing structure. So I'm I'm excited to see the project go forward. That's all I have at the moment. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Melinda. Um, I just want to make sure that there will be something that indicates the new roof line on the second building. I think it's the second building. This is all a little bit confusing to me, but I just I want to be able to visualize how high that's going to be. Is that possible? Um, I, I think that what we might be able to do is compare that to the existing roof that's there and be able to tell you that it would be X number of feet over the existing roof. Maybe we can even have Ben outline the ridge of the existing roof on a set of plans that we bring to the site meeting. Right. Okay. Um, Paul, thank you, Melinda. Uh, Paul, any comments? Um, no comments yet, but... Um... I'm assuming this remains two separate dwellings. Is that right, Kevin? Yes. Um, what's going to happen is once we finish the renovation inside and out, we will sell the front unit at 25 Lang Street. And my wife and I are going to retain the back unit at 23 Lang Street for our own personal use. Okay. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I don't have um, any specific comments, but I would say that it would be very helpful if uh, you can present a more developed uh, landscape uh, plan. Uh, because, you know, as it was before, it said before, this house is kind of exposed on the street. And uh, it would be appropriate to, uh, to, to have a, a landscape plan that, that it's more specific than the one that you have presented. But other than that, I think that I look forward to the we side visit and uh, this is going to be a very interesting project. Um, any public comments? Okay, in the absence of uh, public comments, I will ask for a motion to continue. Luis, the there is a hand raised. Oh, Stuart Wilson, go ahead, please. You are muted.
You are, you are still muted. Unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there. Well, I guess you can't see me, but that's all right. <clears throat> yes, Let's we, we oh, can see you. We can see you. I'm up there. Okay, I got it. I got it. Um, let's see. I like the I like the plan. I like the, what what Kevin's done. And um, I just have one point, and that is um, the driveway the way it is now uh, probably just holds one normal car. And I just wonder what happens if the people that he sells to 25 to um, have two cars where are they going to put their other car because the uh, the carport is disappearing as we found out and uh, so there's just any any other place except uh, on a lengthened driveway so I would I would suggest I would suggest maybe or wonder whether there's room enough to uh, make it long enough for two cars, because otherwise uh, they're going to be parking, say in two cars, they're going to be parking one of them on the street all the time, which can't be done in the winter anyway, but they would be doing it in the summer. <coughs> and um, well, I have a kind of a, a kind of a, a strong interest in this because uh, uh, we live right across the street. And uh, the previous, we never had that problem in the, with the last people who were the woodlands uh, because the little carport was there. So they had one car in the driveway and the other car was in the carport. But well, you see the, see the problem. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very so much, Mr. Wilson. If yes. I might comment, um, Kevin Hurley again, we are yes. extending the driveway on the right hand side of the property slightly so that there can be two cars parked in that driveway and uh -huh. not have those cars extend into the street. <laughs> well, okay, that, that sounds great. Uh, I, I hope it isn't a matter of just a couple of inches. Where, where is the street? Yeah, is, it, is it the actual street or, or is, um, how far from the street would two normal cars come? I don't have that number tonight, but I can give you the number. Uh, I'll, I'll send that number to you and I can also give it to the commission uh, at the site meeting. Yeah, would it, would it, would it mean one of the cars crossed the, the uh, sidewalk over there? The side mark we're proposing to remove. Uh, yeah, so there is an asphalt, uh, there's an asphalt yeah. sidewalk that runs just on this property parallel to the street. And we're yeah, proposing to remove that sidewalk. Uh, I see, I see. Well, that would solve that, right. Oh uh, yeah, that's good. That clarifies something that I couldn't quite understand about the drawings. I see, you're gonna you remove it and right. Okay, well, I just hope it doesn't it doesn't cause a problem. If it, yeah, I suppose if it's if it's basically green right down to the street, which is what you're saying, right? Correct. Um, then um, then if the if the if the lead car, so to speak, were were a foot in from the street, I guess that would be all right. Uh, it's just it wouldn't be good to have the people putting one of their cars out right in front of the building on the street all the time, which they'd have to do otherwise. No, I agree with that. They should not be parking in the street. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I think it's lovely. I think that it looks, looks very good. Beautiful renderings, I think. <laughs> Completely uneducated judge. Thanks very much, Mr. Wilson. And any other public comments? Okay, in the absence of uh, uh, more public comments, uh, I will ask for a motion to continue the application to uh, March 16th with a site visit on uh, March 9th. I don't know what we decided. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, me out. <laughs> yeah, the site visit was March 9th at 8 a.m. Okay. So moved. Ten seconds. Okay, uh, Dennis? Hey, Dennis? Aye. Henry? Aye. Peter? Aye. Melinda? Aye. Paul? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So we'll see you in about a month. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, folks. All right. Uh, I think that uh, we have uh, finished the uh, public hearings. We have other business. Uh, I'm not familiar with the certificate of extension of 625 Lower Road. Heather can fill, the, fill us in. I believe the applicant is here. Um, 625 Lowell Road was um, some modifications to the barn. Um, the certificate expires or expired in March 2021. Um, and they, due to some delays, work has not started yet. They anticipate work to begin this March. So they're requesting an extension. And uh, I may ask, is the extension, does the, uh, are there any change in the plans or is just an extension for, for the purpose? Yeah, hi everyone, Rich Santoro, nice to see everyone again. Um, there are no change in plans at all. Um, it just unfortunately got delayed due to work life, kids and everything that, like that. And so, um, and we, and the, the certificate lapsed unfortunately. So um, we're looking to reboot it, but there are no change in plans at all. I would say the only change that is from the original application is that looting construction is not going to be the um, contractor anymore. It's likely going to be Fabio construction, but the actual details of the certificate or the, the plans remain the same. Okay, this seems to be like a fairly straightforward thing. So I will ask uh, if anybody has any comments, but I'm not going to poll everybody. <laughs> If there are no comments, then and there are no public comments. We need public comments and other business without, right? I move that we extend the certificate of approval for 625 Lowell Road for a period of a year. Is that what we extend? We usually do six months. Six months. Is that sufficient, Rick? But it would be six months from March 3rd, right? From March 3rd, yes. Thank you. <laughs> six months. I'll, I'll second it. Six months from today, you mean? No, from March 3rd when the certificate 3rd. expires. So it expired on March 3rd. It expired oh, March it expired 3rd, 2021. 2021. Ah, That's right. So sorry. we are way out of the window. So six months from today. How's that? Is that enough time to get the work done? Yeah, yeah thank you. Okay. Okay. So now I'll call Dennis. Aye. Henry? I abstain. I have no idea what the content is. I'm sure you're right to extend it. Uh, thank you, Peter. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Paul. I don't know if we seconded the motion, but it's yeah, not. It's I, I second it and I vote aye. Okay, and I vote an aye as well. So you have a six months extension from today. Um, good luck. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate all of your time. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Have a good night. <laughs> stop. We should stop meeting like this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. There are some minutes, but I couldn't see the minutes. Uh, Heather. I don't think Heather got them out yet. So they'll okay. be on your so next agenda. We'll bypass the minutes and I will give you an update uh, that I said I was going to give at the beginning um, of uh, some discussions that we've been having. And the reason I'm commenting this is because I want to hear. I want to have some input from the members of the commission. And in addition to that, I want uh, uh, to share uh, these ideas to uh, see how we can make them work or whether it's worth pursuing them. Uh, the main thing is that we've been having conversations with uh, the historic commission. Uh, Dennis and I met with uh, Melissa Saffield and with uh, Nancy Nelson which are the chair and a member of the Historic Commission. And uh, there are two issues with them. The first one is that uh, the Historic Commission is sponsoring uh, Town Warren number 30, uh, which is uh, the 
scenic, scenic uh, roads uh, bylaw. Uh, and I will not give you all the details, but it's uh, basically a motion to preserve the appearance of some of the historic roads. And I suggest that you go and see it, uh, the Article 30, which is very comprehensive. That says which roads are they? And it has something that is very nice, which I, which we would have, which is a, has a, a, a fine uh, for not following the rules of this uh, law of, or this uh, warrant if it is approved. So that was the first thing that we wanted to, to endorse that um, a, a warrant. We don't have to be a sponsor or anything. It was just a matter of uh, giving a, our voice support uh, to have a, a scenic uh, roads uh, bylaw. Heather. Um, I think if we're going to discuss it and, and have a vote to endorse um, or support the Warren article, we need to have it specifically listed on the agenda. So okay. if well, you want to reach out to Heather and I, and we can um, put it on a future agenda. Okay. So let's consider that uh, if what I just described to you, it's, uh, it, it's an idea and a project, and I will put it in the agenda. And uh, if you think that it's a good thing, then we can vote it up or down. Again, I'm not uh, uh, trying to make the Historic Districts Commission a co-sponsor or anything like that. You see, I'm trying to uh, have the Historic District Commission being on record that uh, we agree of this uh, initiative and that we consider that it is a positive uh, step. And of course, that is as long as we all collectively agree that that's the case. The, the way that this will be realized is that when the town warrant is proposed in town meeting, then maybe one of us will stand up and say, you know, the Story Districts Commission uh, endorses this idea and hopefully we will vote for that. Uh, that's one thing that I wanted to discuss with the Story uh, Commission. Luis, um, I, I'm not sure everybody knows what this is all about or knows uh, much about it. So it might be good, Heather, if you could send the synopsis of it uh, for everybody. Just so yeah, they... when it when it's when it's listed on an agenda, um, I'll have a link, um, to the actual one article for you to review, and I'll I'll Good. include a synopsis in your um leading notes. Yeah, Good. It's, Good. It, it, it's uh it's in page twenty eight of the of the town yeah, warrant. The, I was going to say the twenty twenty two warrant is available on the town website now. Yeah, so it's can, it's there. Uh, I got it from there. see the text. Okay, that, that's one issue that we discussed with the Historic Commission. The other issue that we discussed was uh, a... Oh, you froze, Luis. Oops. Hello. We so lost him. There you there are. There you are. <laughs> oh, every, everybody got froze. You <laughs> see, you all went <laughs> My connection is unstable. <laughs> That's good. Okay, the second thing is that we wanted to have a, the Historic Commission as a resource to the Historic Districts Commission. What this means is that, you know, us as a Historic Districts Commission are in charge of making the actual uh, nitty gritty decision whether this thing goes or doesn't go, uh, as, uh, depending on whether it is historic or not. And of course, that's a point of an endless discussion. So what I wanted, the way that I wanted to, to conceptualize these issues to say that we are a historic districts commission, but that we should be informed by historical facts. In other words, we cannot come up and say that this is historic because of, we decided so it would be very nice uh, to have a context by which uh, some uh, entity that uh, has some expertise or some knowledge of the field then informs us about the historic references that may exist in one side that we're considering. And that doesn't mean that they are going to have any uh, bearing in the decisions that we make. The decision is going to be based upon the impression of each one of the commissioners and the collective vote of the commission itself but it will provide the commission with additional reference points by which a decision of each member can be formulated in a way that uh, it's uh, uh, 
at, at least appears to be rational and logical. You know, in other words, we we don't, if if uh, the historical mission says that this site is historic, then we probably should consider that the site is historic, and we probably should we should not ignore that. If the historical mission says that it has has no history at all, then we kind of make up a history for that and say that we should go one way or the other. So, from my perspective, this was something that that we can uh, uh, collaborate in a constructive way. And I wanted to float that idea to each one of you and uh, see how can we implement this in, in the event that we, that you believe that this is something worth pursuing. And I would love to hear any comments. I know it's an advanced time, but if you can mention anything that would be very helpful. And again, Dennis has been involved with these, and uh, it's only one other member because if it's more than one, then we have a quorum and we kind of meet. Well, Luis, uh, I, I'll, I'll jump in and say, I think more collaboration between our two committees or commissions is, is can only be a good thing. I think we do tend to silo ourselves in town a little bit. In fact, I'd like to see a little bit closer relationship with the planning board. Uh, because I think that the Hildreth Corner project is a perfect example of, you know, we were on the front page of the of the paper this morning as the final gatekeeper somehow of Concord's his, historic uh, character, which is really only partly true. So I really, um, I think rather than rely in sort of calling Bob Gross like on the side and trying to get some opinions really quickly, it'd be nice to have an official or a more let's call it a, a, pro, a public relationship between our committees and commissions. Um, and in fact, I know we've talked about establishing an actual review board, which may be taking it a bridge too far, but uh, that's something I'd also love to see the sort of Uber review before it goes to any of the commissions um, that looks at all of the sort of, the sort of uh, criteria in place. The only thing I would caution is that I, I think additional overlay districts or overlay requirements are not going to be super popular, even if the intent is good, just because, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I, you know, if you have to jump through too many hoops to do a project, it just becomes burdensome. So I think I'm being influenced by my colleague, Paul Ware here, but um, I don't want to additionally burden people on the, on the, in the town with, uh, with too much too many overlapping requirements. So that's all I would say. Uh, the, and, and the way that, that uh, I believe that this would work would be if uh, there's no involvement of the town, in the sense that you know, if we get an application, let's, let's use again 615 Lower Road because that, it's on the, on, the, on the forefront. If we get an application for 615 Lower Road, which is controversial from the beginning, then it would be very useful to have a statement from the historic commission saying, this is historical and why? You see, and, the, and the, there may be many perspectives on that. And that is not a factor that it's going to determine how we make a decision or not, but it's going to be a factor that it's taken into account in the sense that- I see, it's informational, I see, it's, okay. It's, it's informational, you see, we're, we're not adding any layer of uh, uh, regulation or control, we are just saying, um, we have uh, uh, learned people, uh, we have resources. I think that we personally, when we are dealing with a difficult project, you see, I certainly, I uh, have many architect friends, et cetera, and then I ask them, uh, I ask them to, to educate me. So I like that's the idea- That's very dangerous to ask architects for our opinion. Well, you know, that's the reason I got created and <laughs> have opinions. <laughs> but that, uh, that is exactly what we're trying to pursue. But uh, in a sort of a more predictable, you see, because if we, my point is, you know, we have a historic commission, which is the only thing that they deliberate about the historic role and the historic references of Concord. Mm -hmm. So they should be a very a rich resource of references for what we actually do. Agreed. And, and I think that that should be that cooperation should be more fluid. And that, that's the reason I'm, I'm putting it uh, in the forum to see how you all believe that this would work if it, you think it would work. So I, I'd love to hear uh, feedback. 
And um, any comments, you can send them either directly to me or through Heather. I don't think that this is anything uh, uh, deliberative as a historic district commission. I think that we're just trying to make the process a little smoother uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, controversial uh, sites like Lower Road. Any any objections? You say, I'm, I'm not used to talking, and he always says no. <laughs> I, as a Paul, but I, I certainly have no objection. I think it's a good idea. I think that 615 Low Road is a good illustration of a circumstance in which it would be beneficial to uh, the community as well as to us because. I mean, I think the commission's decision was right. I know I voted against it, but part of that is that I think in the long pull, that community is going to vote against anything at 615 Low Road. And it might be helpful for the historic commission or the, you know, the, the combination of entities to comment on the significance of the area, but also the fact that there's an interest in permitting some development. However, circumscribed. And so in some respects, it had the potential to take the heat off us in the most difficult circumstances, because there'd be two voices instead of one. But to your point, without getting too windy here, I, I think the idea, broadly speaking, is a good idea. Okay. So what uh, what I will do is I, I will continue. I'll, I'll ask uh, Dennis, uh, uh, to uh, be uh, uh, our to join partnership with me <laughs> and continue the discussions uh, with uh, with uh, Melissa and uh, Linda Nelson and uh, see how can we implement these things. I think that we probably will come back to you uh, in terms of ideas of how to put it in practice. And of course, we will all coordinate with. Uh, Heather, to make sure that we don't go against any town regulations or anything like that. Uh, again, this is just a matter of uh, a broad cooperation between different boards and committees. And uh, uh, Peter mentioned an architectural review board. Well, you know, that's the next uh, uh, project. So um, be prepared. I, su <laughs> I, su uh, Heather. I, support, I support what you're getting at. If um, if you step back and you look at the 615 discussion, uh, what many people will have seen is our, our saying that large construction on that small site ruins the historic character of the area. And then many people will simply say, oh, they're just local people saying they don't want anything near them. And in no case has what is significant and a definition of the historic character of that particular corner been described sufficiently so people would understand what they're protecting. And I think that that's a conversation with the historical commission folks uh, that can help. And again, I don't want to uh, take upon ourselves a role that we're not supposed to have, but I do think that if you look down through hundreds as I have in the past of nomination forms, that people, the weakest area in nomination forms is typically the line that says explain significance. And in my experience, the weakest area of historic commissions is the inability to ascribe significance of various degrees to different aspects of a building uh, and building proposal. So I think that on very controversial sites, just as you have said, it's important that we be clear about that. And if Melissa and Nancy and their uh, colleagues can help do that, then I think it helps the town in many different ways. Well Thank said, you. Henry. Thank you, Henry, very well said. Thank you, Heather. Luis, just in the future, if we're gonna have discussions about things, if you can email Heather and I to add it to the agenda so we can have a specific agenda item listed. Okay. Um, Brief updates are okay under other business, but um, conversations and discussions like this, we should have specifically listed on the agenda. Okay, we'll, we'll do that because we hope to have a few more. <laughs>
and of course, any initiative in parts of any of the members of this commission that uh, you think that we should uh, pursue, uh, by all means, let us know or uh, make it public and uh, we'll discuss it. This is what I'm trying to do. So I don't think that uh, there's anything else. Anybody else has anything else to discuss or to mention? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I, I have to do something before we adjourn. I want oh, to I'm ask. Sorry. Thank you. I, I want to ask for a motion to thank Linda Escobedo for yes. her patience and <laughs> because thank apparently you, she's still there and she hasn't opened her microphone yet. Except now. <laughs> I'm looking forward to joining all of you at the NOSH. Uh, that's one comment I would make. And the other comment I would, uh, the other comment I would make is that the, um, this, this um, introduction of a discussion that you had just now and that you're gonna continue in the future, I think is a good one. Thanks very much. Great. Good. All right, so I have a motion to dismiss or to adjourn. I can't make that motion. I, I made it. I can I Peter, second where's my your own motion? motion? Second. Where's your second. motion? <laughs> second, Paul. Okay. Hand well, thanks very much. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.